Hi everyone, it's Tony. I'm going to do a Bible study today. You can get your Bibles out. And uh, we're going to do John chapter 2. So, um, if you can and you're able to read along. First we'll say a prayer. Dear Lord, omnipresent being, creator of the universe, Father, thank you for so many blessings, Lord. And thank you for watching over, protecting, helping us, Lord, and all you do for us day by day. And Please uh, help us understand your word, Lord. Lead us, Lord, as we read and study your word, Lord, to show ourselves approved by you, Lord God. As your word says, we should study, Lord, and as, as we <clears throat> go through our daily walk with you, we want to study and learn, and we want to be edified, and we want to be encouraged in your word, Lord, and share your word with others. So this is what we're trying to do, Lord Father, in your mighty name, Jesus. Be with us, Lord, and please forgive us of our sins and watch over us, Lord, as we come and as we go. Thank you for so many blessings. In your mighty name, Jesus Christ, amen. So now we'll read John chapter 2, and then we'll go over some of my notes, and hopefully you'll be blessed by this Bible study. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> John chapter 2, uh, verse 1 says, And the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus Christ was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus saith unto him, They have no wine. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. His mother saith unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. And there were set there six water pots of stone, after the manner of the purifying of the Jews, containing two or three firkins apiece. I think a firkin is about three quarters of a barrel from what the dictionary said. Jesus saith unto them, verse 7, fill the water pots with water, and they filled them up to the brim. Verse 8, he saith unto them, draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast, and they bear it. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water, <clears throat> excuse me, that was made wine, and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water, knew the governor of the feast called the bridegroom, and saith unto him, Every man at the beginning does set forth good wine, and when men have well drunk, then that which is worse, but thou hast kept the good wine until now. Verse 11, This beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee. And manifested forth his glory, and his disciples believed on him. Verse 12, after this he went down to Capernaum, he and his mother and his brethren and his disciples. And they continued there not many days. Verse 13, and the Jews' Passover was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem, and found in the temple those that were selling oxen and sheep and doves. And the changers of money were sitting there. Verse 15, when he had made a scourge of small cords, Jesus drove them all out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changers' money and overthrew their tables. And verse 16, he said unto them that sold doves, Take these things away. Make not my father's house a house of merchandise. And his disciples remembered that it was written, The zeal of mine house has eaten me up. And then answered the Jews in verse 18, And said unto him, What sign showest thou unto us, seeing that thou doest these things? In verse 19, Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. 
And then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple in building, and will thou raise it up in three days? But he spake of the temple of his body, in verse 21. In verse 22 says, When therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this unto them. And they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. Now, verse 23, When he was in Jerusalem at the Passover, in the feast day, many believed in his name. When they saw the miracles which he did. Verse 24, but Jesus did not commit himself unto them, because he knew all men, and needed not that any should testify of man, for he knew what was in a man. And don't we all? As the Bible says, we're all born as sinners. So, he did not trust himself to them, because he already knew they were, they were after him, you know, for bringing the truth. So, <clears throat> I have made notes uh, regarding John chapter 2 that I'd like to share at this time. So, um, regarding the wedding that Jesus and the disciples attended with his mother Mary, um, where Jesus performed his first miracle of turning the water into wine. Well, verse 1 talks about it being the third day, and it talks about a marriage in Cana of Galilee with Jesus' mother there. And um, Jesus was called to this wedding and his disciples. He was invited to the wedding. Now, when we read the Bible, we learn there are usually deeper meanings to the verses, which we need the Holy Spirit to help us understand. This is why we pray to the Father and we ask him to help us understand the meaning of what we are reading. So please be sure to include him in the study of his word so that he can reveal to you its meaning. Truthfully, we should invite Jesus to all of our weddings because without him in our marriages, they usually fail. He is the creator of marriage and therefore only he can help us through the struggles that must be endured as we go through our married life. Jesus Christ should be the head of every marriage union between man and woman. This way we can get off to the right start as we journey with our partner through this very difficult life. In verse 3 where the mother of Jesus lets him know the wine is running out, Jesus calls his mother woman. He tells her his hour has not yet come. A possible reason he calls his mother woman instead of mother may be because although Mary gave him physical life, and certainly she has to be uh, respected, all mothers should be respected by their children, but he's um, indicating here that she is a human being and not to be worshipped. Many people have put their, <coughs> excuse me, Many people have put her in the place of Jesus Christ, but she is a mere woman, and she is not God. We are to respect her position in being the mother of Jesus, but not to worship her. She was chosen by God to be the earthly mother of Jesus Christ, but she was still only a human being, like we are. Also, Jesus tells her his, his hour has not yet come. And Mary tells the servants to do what Jesus she tells the servants, go ahead and do as Jesus tells them to do. So here we need to understand that we are servants of Jesus Christ. And we are to follow his commands and obey them. He is the leader of our walk with God. He lights the way and we are to listen to him and do what he says. Just like his mother told the servants. We learned there were six water pots in verse 6 of stone used for purifying people. Jesus told the servants in verse 7 to fill the pots to the brims, and they did so. In verse 8, Jesus tells them to draw out the water and present it to the governor of the feast, so they did. The governor tasted the water and discovered it was the best wine. In verse 10, the governor was surprised that the bridegroom brought out the best wine at the end of the feast. 
Usually they brought out the best wine first and the weaker wine later. This is the beginning of the miracles of Jesus, which showed, in verse 11, which showed his glory. And here is when the disciples believed on him. The miracle of Jesus Christ is that he is the living water that turns people from ordinary to fine wine. He replaces our shame and despair and gives us joy in the midst of our circumstances. Many people look for his miracles to be performed instead of realizing he is the miracle we are looking for. He can give us what no human being can offer us. Our mothers gave us physical life, but he can offer us spiritual life for eternity. And also, we want to understand that serving Jesus Christ is a privilege, not a chore. He is our all in all. He is life and life abundantly. Nothing compares to a born-again relationship with Jesus Christ. Verse 12, after this, Jesus and his mother, brethren, and disciples went to Capernaum and did not stay there many days. Verse 13, Jesus went up to Jerusalem to celebrate the Jews' Passover. Verse 14 to 16, Jesus found people selling animals in the temple and drove them out. He was very angry that they were making God's house a house of merchandise. This is very important to take note of because this is what many people do with the things of God. Instead of using them to reach lost souls and bring them to Jesus, they use them for their profit. But by reading these verses, we can clearly see how Jesus Christ views this kind of behavior. We are to share what God has given us in hopes of reaching lost souls. But none of us should expect to make merchandise of his word. Jesus told us himself, you cannot serve God in money. No man can have two masters. He will love the one and hate the other, as written in Matthew 6, 24. Verse 17, his disciples remember that it was written, Zeal of thine house has eaten me up. This can be read in Psalm 69, 9. For the zeal of thine house has eaten me up, and the reproaches of them that reproach thee have fallen on me. We will discover as we serve Jesus Christ, we get very angry when we see false religion lead people astray. The devil is very clever in setting up man-made religions with certain extra-biblical teachings that did not come from Jesus Christ. People fall into these traps and begin believing they must work for their salvation instead of trusting the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Also, we will be reproached for speaking the truth of Jesus Christ just as he was. He taught us that no servant is greater than their master, and if they persecuted him, they will also persecute us. Please refer to John 15, verse 20. Verse 18, the Jews asked Jesus, What sign would you show for doing these things? He told them, If they destroy this temple, he would raise it up in three days. In verse 20, the Jews did not understand that he was talking about the temple of his body and not the building that was. it took 46 years to build. In verse 22, it is very important to take note of that when he had risen from the dead, the disciples believed what he had said, as well as the scripture that proclaimed his truth. We want to understand that our bodies are God's temple. His Holy Spirit fills our bodies. He can raise our bodies from the dead and give us eternal life, just as he did with Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life. This is what sets him apart from all others. Please see John 11:25. The scripture tells us that buildings will be destroyed, but our souls will live on forever. Those who accept God's plan of salvation will inherit eternal life in heaven, and those who deny his plan will be separated from God for all eternity. We must make our choice now while it is 
we are still alive. For Jesus Christ or against him? Verse 23. Many people believed on Jesus on the feast of Passover because of the miracles he performed. What many do not understand is that Jesus Christ is the Passover lamb that was sacrificed for the sins of the world. Verse 24 and 25, Jesus did not commend himself to the men at the feast because he knew they had evil intentions toward him and he had more work to do before his hour came. May you be blessed by this chapter as I have been. Each and every time I read it, I learn something new. This is why it is important to put as much time as possible into the study of God's Word. You will be so very blessed and edified by doing so. May the light of Jesus Christ shine on you brightly as you study to show thyself approved. And finally, um, I would like to uh, finish by sharing some things about our, when we come to Jesus Christ, about our salvation, uh, when we come to Jesus Christ for our salvation and we accept him as our Lord and personal Savior, we do become students of his word. Every relationship is based on conversation, and our walk with Jesus Christ is no different. We use his words to understand his ways. We come to understand that it's all about Jesus. We must die to ourselves and live to God. This is because in our natural state, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> excuse me, we are dead in trespasses and sins. Ephesians 2.1 and you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. When we come to Jesus Christ for salvation, we must agree with his word that we are sinners in need of a savior. We must understand there is nothing we can do to save ourselves. The Bible says the wages of sin are death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. You can read that in Romans chapter 6 verse 23. We want to seek the things of God and put him first in our lives so it will go well with us. Just as it says in Matthew 6, verse 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Also in 2 Timothy 2.15, we are instructed to study to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So let's study to show ourselves approved so that we can be approved by our Father in Heaven. Blessings to you. For those who haven't accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you can pray a prayer right now similar to this prayer. Heavenly Father, please come into my heart. Send your Son, Jesus Christ, to come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior, my personal Lord and Savior, Lord Jesus. Forgive me of my sins. And guide me, Lord, and help me to repent and walk in righteousness, Lord, and turn away from my sin, follow Jesus, follow his words. Help me, Lord, to become that new creation that is spoken of in the Bible. I want to be born again, Father, Father, Heavenly Father, I'd like to be born again and um, know that your Holy Spirit resides inside of me to, to forevermore lead me uh, and guide me and um, give me the free gift of eternal life. And thank you for hearing my prayer. I, I humble myself before you, Lord, and I surrender my will to your will. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, amen. So next time we'll do chapter 3. I, I love uh, John chapter 3 because it does talk about being born again. And that's what sets us apart um, from any of the false religions that we are born again into a true relationship with Jesus Christ and we live for him um, we die to ourselves we try to uh, every day pick up pick up his cross and follow him so hopefully you'll come back next time and we'll uh, go over chapter three have a very blessed day bye now